By doing business or economics, I, I'm broadening my options and I held out on one thing. Well, if I do a degree in, say, chemistry, I'm limited to jobs in that field. At the moment, I'm not sure whether I want to do teaching or I want to go into industry. Well, if I'm going to go through all the trouble of going through education for how many other years it is, I want to be able to feel in you know, myself that there's got to be somebody out there and I've got something to offer, that uh, all the knowledge I've gained, I can do something for somebody out there. Does any of this sound familiar? If you're in the last few years of school, then you're nearing the time when you must make some decisions, and they might well be some of the most important decisions you'll have to make in your career. I did a degree in computing not, not really knowing that I was going to go for a job as a computer programmer or a systems analyst. I knew there was a number of jobs that you could do. I, I never had any idea what I wanted to do when I did my O-levels, which are GCSEs now. I don't know where it came from. I to this day cannot pinpoint how or why I decided I wanted to be a journalist. Well, there is nothing new. The simple fact is everyone goes through the career choosing process and very few people get what they want straight away. The important thing is to be confident and to realize that with every step you take, you can open a whole new set of doors. Doors that will lead to new options and options that lead to new careers. In this video, we are going to check out some successful people in a range of jobs you may not have considered and ask them how they went about their careers. My name's Usha Mystery and I work in the cardiology department. Um, my job title is actually Senior Medical Technical Officer. I've always wanted to work in a hospital, but I've never wanted to be a nurse. So I looked at all the other fields, like physiotherapy, radiography, and a job was advertised here. And I thought, oh, I don't know what the job entails, but let's go have a look. So I came for a day visit, and it quite impressed me going out on the ward, seeing the patients, and then just being left alone with the, the equipment just to do your own tests. So I applied and got an interview and got the job. Um, my name's Ali Rashid and I work as a producer within Calendar. I decide the shape of the programme, what should go in it, uh, what shouldn't go in it, how long the items should be and the order in which they should be in. And, uh, and that means working with technicians and journalists, uh, directors, reporters and it's a lot of fun. I run my own business. It's called Management and Computer Training Services. I basically provide uh, training and administration solutions uh, to companies' uh, needs. They, they actually come to me with problems, um, administration problems or training problems, and I actually provide a, a software solution where it's feasible. My name is Hoshia Singh. I'm an environmental health officer for Bradford Council. Now, the duties vary anything from investigation of food poisoning outbreaks up to investigation of accidents. It's not just investigations that we do, we also deal with prevention. My name's Adiba Malik, uh, I'm actually from Bradford. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a job here at the school at Wellington Middle, uh, which started in January of this year. I did actually work in a factory. Uh, before going to university. Um, I think I'm, I also worked in a chemical factory. I went up to university and decided to do economics and politics. Now, I did economics and politics not because I wanted to be an economist or a politician, but I knew that it would give me a card, really. It was a sort of passport to whatever I wanted to be. I wanted to be a journalist. Um, and I went, I met the... Uh, uh, the editor of the local paper and I just asked him for a job and he said come and see me Monday and there it was I was a trainee journalist so it was a traditional route that I took really into television basically starting you know I trained as a journalist on newspapers and then moved into television well when I left school I actually left with two CSEs but uh, being keen I thought uh, well I'll, I'll go into engineering so I started as a, an apprentice and worked myself up I ended up doing uh, a higher national diploma in engineering. The skills that I gained uh, during my career as an engineer helped me to get to where I am today. And that included things like dealing with people, 
and also having the knowledge of uh, industry and the processes that are actually used in uh, varying areas of environmental health businesses. That has actually helped me to uh, do the job better than some of the other environmental health officers. The environment and the protection of the environment is to do with dealing with processes and control of processes. Well, to actually run the, the kind of company that I run today, I needed a, a number of skills. Uh, and I've actually picked those up during my career and my, my education that I've had. Um, first of all, I got a degree in computer studies, which gives me the computing background that I need, the programming side of things. Um, one of the major jobs that I had in my career was as a senior training, consult, uh, training supervisor at Bradford iTech. And there I picked up uh, the training skills that I needed. Uh, and those are very important in getting me uh, the last job that I had, which was with a company called Mentor Interactive Training, where I actually designed training packages for very uh, large organisations. And there it was very important to produce work to BS 5750 standard, to produce quality work, uh, to provide a professional service. And that was sort of the last lot of uh, skills that I needed to provide the kind of work that I actually do today. Um, so actually, if I put all those skills together, uh, I've got the whole, the full being of the, of the person that, that, uh, that I am today, to run the company that I run today. My name is Ali Asghar. I am uh, the project manager here, and I um, specialize in the recovery of crude oil. I have what is now equivalent to MSc chemistry, and the way that I obviously obtained was by uh, carrying out with my studies on a daily release basis. My advice to, to any youngster is to obviously work hard whilst you're at school to achieve those basic education uh, qualifications such as O level or GCSE as they are now, now known and, and if there is the aptitude and the, the desire to carry on with the further education by all means go for that because that's one of the best options but if there is also a desire to go into industry or into any uh, other form of employment try and carry out with your education by either day release or evening classes because as qualifications at the end of the day are extremely important to make a progress in, in any form of life. The key, well for me, was to look for a job with training. Say you don't want to do your A-levels, you've, you've done your O-levels, that's it. Look for a job where there is training, more qualifications, and from there you can either go progress to other jobs or you can move up in the ladder of success in your own profession. And it's well known that, you know, that certain people just recruit graduates because they know they have certain qualities that, 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 they, that, that they can work on and build on and improve. Uh, but I mean sort of only 2% uh, of the population are graduates, you know. Uh, the rest aren't. And I mean here in, in calendar, you know, it isn't awash with people with graduates. In fact, uh, uh, most of the successful people here haven't got a degree. And uh, most of them have only got all levels. Uh, which, uh, 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 which proves that after a while it is experience of a job that matters more than it is the qualifications. In fact, the qualification for that job inevitably is experience and not a degree or, you know, or an O-level. I went away in 1986 to Hull and my mother admittedly was very upset about me going for a variety of reasons. But my, my father was very much for it. He was very much backing me up along the way. And now that I've come away with a good degree, a good job in a, in a lovely school, um, I think now they look back and they think, well, yeah, it was the best thing that they could have done for, for me as their daughter. And it's something in my hand. It's something that nobody can take away from me. And if I need it, I'll use it. If I don't need it, it's still there in a little box. And whenever I need it later on in life, it'll be there. Well, um, I think what I, I can say to them is you must have faith in yourself 
you mustn't be shy or you mustn't be scared of having a go and tackling anything that you think wants tackling. Because when I started environmental health, I, in the environmental health department, I, didn't, I had no idea what environmental health officer did. And I thought, well, I'm going to have a go. And I did my uh, study and I worked hard and I got where I am today. So all I can say is you must have a go and believe in yourself. I think it's a very personal thing. I mean, personally, I feel as if, if you don't succeed in your A-levels or even after all levels, you do think, OK, I just can't go any further. I, I don't want to study. I'd like to get a job. Employers these days do encourage day release. Um, I think I always, I mean, I'm always for further education. If you can achieve your, your grades, you know, go to university. But if you find you get to a point where you think, oh, well, I don't know what I'd like to do, there's always jobs like mine present. You know, you could come round just to have a look around. Nobody's ever going to stop that. And just open your horizon. Don't think there's just this, this and this. It's hard. It, it's hard at first. You worry how your family's going to take it. Uh, but I think the best thing is to perhaps talk over with the family and say what's involved. Um, my parents-in-law weren't... They're very traditional. Um, and I was the first member of that family to actually go to university and, and actually gain a degree. But if you sit down and you tell them that your aims in life are this, that and the other, and to achieve those aims, you're going to have to do this, that and the other, I think, think they do accept it. And then if at each stage, you, you make them proud of you. You know, each year, if you pass your exams, they know that you're actually achieving something. I don't think um, people realise that uh, it doesn't always matter what qualifications you get. You've got to keep up with, uh, with, the, with the new technology, the new changes. I am on, forever going on courses now to keep up. I think um, you should not be afraid of um, carrying on and taking qualifications and training to go further because that is absolutely necessary. All doors can be open to you. Now, some might be more difficult than others, but that's when uh, your own personal character comes through. Uh, that's when determination comes through. That's when initiative comes through. You know, how do I get around that door? You don't necessarily have to go straight through the door. You can always go through the window. So it doesn't really matter where you start. It depends where you finish. Um, and I think I would grab every single opportunity that came my way uh, that would help me towards my ultimate goal or the profession I want to enter. For instance, to this day, um, I've not closed my options. I might not spend the rest of my life in television. Um, I might decide to do something else. Um, and to that extent, you know, I've started doing an MBA because I feel that might open some more fields to me. So even at the age of 38, I don't feel that this is it. So, the only thing that is really proved by this video is the fact that every person has a different story to tell. Even if two people happen to follow the same career path, neither of them would explain it in the same way. But if you had the idea that serious professions are only found in popular jobs like an accountant, lawyer or doctor, then these people should have shown you otherwise. But more importantly, they demonstrate that no two people need necessarily use the same route to achieve success. Leaving school, for example, may not mean the end of your education. There are lots of jobs that offer training and qualifications on a day release basis. So keep your options open and look for opportunities wherever you go. Above all, accept that advice, like the advice from this tape, is free. But it does come with one catch. You and only you can decide what to do with it. So give yourself a chance and grab any advice you can using all of the many sources available. Talk to your personal tutors. Check out the careers service. Look at what the colleges and universities have to offer. And above all else, discuss your future with your parents.